Hey, what's up, Micro Church? This week we're going to continue our series through Mark, and we're going to be in Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. So if you would go ahead and turn in your copy of the word to Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, and I'll read that for us. Mark wrote again, he talking about Jesus, he entered the synagogue, and a man was there with a withered hand. That word withered, it literally means to be uh, uh, paralyzed or to be stiff or to be deformed in some way. In Luke 6, uh, verse 6, Luke tells us that it was his right hand that was withered or his right hand that was deformed. And it says this man uh, was there with a the withered hand, and they, talking about the scribes and the Pharisees, uh, they watched Jesus. And they were watching Jesus because they wanted to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath. Uh, the, the law stated that people could not work on the Sabbath. And if Jesus was going to heal this man, that was considered a form of work, right? And so they were trying to trap Jesus. Uh, they, they wanted to accuse him is what Mark tells us. In verse 3, uh, he said, meaning Jesus, he said to the man with the withered hand, come here. And so he called the man over, right, from wherever he was at. And he said to them, to the Pharisees, Jesus said to the Pharisees, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save a life or to kill? But they were silent, right? So Jesus kind of stumped the Pharisees and the scribes here. They had no response to his answer. Jesus knew the answer, but they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, right? Jesus looked around and he, he saw the hardness of their hearts and he was grieved and he was angered at the hardness of their hearts. And he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out and his hand was restored. And the Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him on how to destroy him, right? This is an incredible uh, narrative. It's an incredible story because it reveals to us three things. One, it reveals to us the heart of God. It reveals to us the, the heart of um, dead religion or the Pharisees, and it reveals the heart of man and, and this man who wants to be restored. And so the first thing that we see here is the heart of God, right? God is a good God. He wants to do good for his people, and he is good because he is love, and love always seeks to do good. And Jesus, what we know about Jesus is he is Emmanuel. He is God in flesh. And because of that, he wants to do good. And so he walks into the Sabbath and he sees this man with the withered hand and immediately he wants to heal this man. But he knows that he's also trying to be trapped. He knows what the Pharisees are up to. and uh, But he's not, he's not going to let that stop him. And so he calls this man. He says, come on over. And, and he looks at the scribes and the Pharisees. He says, what is it? Is it lawful to do good or to do harm? On the Sabbath? Is it lawful to save a life or to kill? And, and the people had no response, right? There was no question in Jesus' mind whether it was lawful or not. Jesus was going to do the right thing. He was going to do the good thing because he loved the people, right? The two greatest commands uh, that we know in Scripture are this love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. And the second, is a close second. Second is like it. It says, love your neighbor, love others as you love yourself. Jesus loved his father. Jesus loved God with everything that he was. And that love that he had for God poured out onto his love for the people. And in this case, it poured out onto the love, his love for this man. And so he healed this man's hand. Right, and so it shows us the heart of God. Now, a a big question that always comes to mind in this is: is if God is a good God, why does He allow evil to still exist? That's a great question. Uh, Norman Geisler uh, uh, presents this argument this way. He says that an all good God would want to destroy evil, an all powerful God can destroy evil, but evil is still not destroyed. Therefore, there is no God, right? That's his argument. He, he bases it off of these three things, which are true, right? A good God would want to destroy evil. That is true. An all-powerful God can destroy evil. Again, it's true. Evil is not yet destroyed, which we know 
because of the sin in our life and the sin in other people's life, uh, that it is not destroyed yet. And so therefore, his basis, his premises, his, his conclusion is there is no God. Uh, the, the problem with that argument, the problem with that conclusion is this, there is no hope, right? Uh, it, it, it rules out the possibility that there can still be a God. And so our defense or the, the argument that's usually presented against Norman Geisler's is this, an all good God would want to destroy evil. That's true. An all powerful God can destroy evil. That's true. Evil is not yet destroyed. It's true. Therefore, one day evil will be destroyed. Right? We have the hope in Jesus Christ that he will one day destroy evil for good. The second thing that we see in this is the heart of the Pharisees. Right? We see that their hearts are hard. Jesus was angered by the hardness of their hearts because uh, their hearts right, were all uh, encompassed on the law and on the tradition, and on, on the rules of their religion, uh, instead of loving God and loving people. And so Jesus, uh, he saw this and he was grieved by it. Their hearts were so ingrained in, in all of this that they forgot what was most important, and that was the love for God and the love for other people. And so Jesus showed them what that looked like by pouring out his love for this man. And the third thing that we see uh, in this is the man in his heart, right? Jesus said to the man, come here. And what did he do? He came, right? He stepped forward. And because he stepped forward and because he stretched out his hand, right? Because he believed and because he had faith and because he obeyed, his hand was restored, right? He was healed. Uh, Jesus loved this man, right? And, and so he broke the law of, of the, the Pharisees and the scribes, not of God, and he did what was good. He showed that we are to love God with everything that we have, everything that we are, and we're to love other people with that same, that love that pours out from us, that from our love for God, uh, and we're to seek the restoration and the reconciliation of others, right? That's why Paul tells us that we have been given the ministry. We've be, been become ministers of reconciliation. Right? We are to seek that out because of our love for God and our love for others. We're to seek to do good because God is good and God is love. Have a great week.